Everybody yearns for something. Few have the drive to reach out and take it. We build for those with the conviction to stand up straight and demand what they want out of life. We champion those who refuse to see the world as it is, but what it could be. Sure, it'd be easier to sit on the couch, but that's just not how we're built. Easy never put a man in space. The status quo never won the Le Mans. And it sure hasn't dominated the Baja 1000 for the last 50 years. No, complacency never really did much of anything. In the age of one-click purchases and two-day shipping, we take solace in the fact that calluses can't be bought. We reject apathy and instant gratification because lasting legacies don't come off the rack. We know what we're building for. What are you building? Hello, y'all. This is the fourth Southern Wheel Four Wheel Drive Association TechNet discussion. Tonight, myself and Michael Morrison is going to host this thing, and we have some guest speakers we'll talk to in a few minutes. Southern Four Wheel Drive continues to focus on our education. So if you're interested, please go to the Southern Four Wheel Drive webpage or the Southern YouTube channel to see the full line of educational videos. This evening, Charlene Bowers and Jonathan Bogman uh, are our guest speakers. But first, let's, uh, let's let Mike tell us a little bit about the, uh, how we're going to run things tonight. So tonight with uh, our fourth installment of the TechNet series, a couple of things. We're going to handle it just like we did um, last week at Clemson Four Wheel Drive Center. If you have a question tonight, make sure that you post it in the live stream and preface it with a cue and we will do a Q&A session with BFG towards the end of the live stream. So you'll have to stick around for the whole show to get your question answered. Um, next up this week, uh, by commenting, I am your name, your city, and state during the TechNet, uh, your name will be put in the hat for this week's great prize. Um, it is a special gift package from Charlene Bowers and Ladies Off-Road Network. So super cool. Make sure that you get that opportunity for some cool swag coming in. Everybody loves cool swag, right? All right. And then the big one, right? For the set of BFG tires, it's a chance to get another entry. Um, tonight, you have to comment, BFG tires are sexy, okay? In the comments um, area and share the live stream. That drawing, again, will be held at Dixie Run. You do not have to be there to win, right? We'll just be holding the, the drawing there. But each week during these tech streams, you get the opportunity to comment, a special comment that we share, and it enters you, for you to win those tires. So remember, BFG tires are sexy for the tires. And for a swag bag from Ladies Off-Road Network, I am your name, your city, and state during the live stream. All right, Al. Mike, when I when I heard you say BFG tires are sexy, I heard a snicker come from across the U.S. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, I I don't know who it was, but I I just heard a snicker from across the U.S. Okay, so now now here here's uh, here's a part that's uh, going to help Southern if you can. Okay, the COVID nineteen thing is what's got us started doing this tech net because we couldn't get together. Uh, our events like Trail Fest twenty twenty. Uh, was canceled, and that's what enables Southern to um, to finance our grant program through the first half of the year. Um, we've we've basically got no revenue stream through the first half of the year. So, if you'd like another change to win the set of five BFG tires this fall, then just become a member of Southern Four Wheel Drive. All you got to do is go to the Southern Four Wheel Drive uh, webpage. It's sfwda.org, and you'll uh, can join. It's ten dollars for a regular membership and fifty dollars for a premium membership. Either one of those memberships gets you a chance to win. So, uh, so, so jump in there, and if you can, go join Southern Four Wheel Drive Association. 
So like Mike said, tonight we're going to do the Southern Four Wheel Drive Tech Net. The subject of tires are sexy. Yeah, they are, okay. Uh, this whole series is sponsored by BF Goodrich. Uh, they've, they've given us a set of tires to give away. Tonight's presentation is going to be by Charlene Bowers. Uh, Charlene is the owner and, and head honcho at Ladies Off-Road Network. Okay. Um, so let me, uh, let me bring Charlene on screen and we'll let her introduce herself all the way from out in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was one of the ones snickering all the way across the country because I love it when I get people to say tires are sexy. And I'm watching the stream right now with everybody saying tires is sexy. Thank you all. <laughs> we did it uh, by accident one day and then all of a sudden it just stuck. So hello, everybody at Southern Drive Association. Thank you for having me on. Okay, so let's let Jonathan... Just to introduce himself in just a minute here. Jonathan is counting down. Hello. Hey, everyone. How's it going? <laughs> hey, uh, Jonathan Ballman here from BF Goodrich Tires. Uh, my, my role at BFG is a field marketing manager uh, for the East Coast. Um, I've met quite a few of you uh, at, uh, at previous events and um, I've been around, uh, been around the event world uh, with BFG for probably about the past seven years. Um, but uh, that's enough history about myself. Um, uh, Al, if you don't mind, I'd like to give a little bit of history about BF Goodrich. Great. Go for it. Yeah. So uh, we're celebrating 150 years of business this year. Um, uh, a, a gentleman named uh, Benjamin Franklin Goodrich started BF Goodrich in uh, 1870. Um, got a, a list. Uh, we've got a long list of firsts in the in the tire world um, is where I'll start back. Um, we were the very first co tire company in the U.S. to create a, a radial all-terrain, which in turn created the all-terrain market that we know today, um, as well as the very first uh, tire company in the U.S. to, to create the, mud, the radial mud terrain, uh, which now is, is what, we, what we call the mud terrain uh, market today. Um, so we've got a, a long list of, of, of firsts in the, in the tire industry. Um, and I, I'm very proud to work for a company that, that puts quality first. And, um, you know, our engineers are always working on the, the very next, uh, the very next uh, iteration of whatever all-terrain, mud-terrain, uh, passenger tire, any, any, anything we've got going on. Some racing history, you know, we've, we, uh, we take a lot of our, our learnings from desert racing and put right into to our tires that you have on your, on your vehicle today. Um, we've had that, that has had 28 consecutive Baja wins and Baja is the, the most grueling um, race on, in North America. And um, to, to, to say that's a, a, a great feat. Um, so I'd like to, to pass it back to Charlene now um, so she can tell us why tires are truly sexy. <laughs> I don't know. Are you guys ready for this? <laughs> um, so in the background, I went ahead and mm -hmm. fired up the BFG YouTube channel. So we have no idea what we're going to see tonight, but I thought we'd have a little bit of fun there. And just a quick moment of background on my history is my very first job out of high school was actually changing dirt bike tires in a motorcycle shop. And now 25 years later, I'm still playing with tires. There's been a lot of cool stuff in the middle there, but uh, I've been working in the off-road industry for over 25 years. And Bauer Media is my main company, so you'll see that uh, quite a bit along the way. And then Ladies Offer Network, we just started about four years ago. And it's a really fun project. It's really exciting. But what I do mostly is I teach. And I've been really fortunate to be a performance team member with BF Goodrich Tires for the last six years. And through that time, I've learned that... <laughs> Tires are sexy. They're way more than these big black things that just go round and round and round on your vehicle that are out there. And you're like, yeah, that's cool. Kick, kick. Make sure that there's some air in them. So the guys have asked me to come and really dig in on tires for you. Uh, today, I'm going to tell you what we're going to talk about. So we are going to talk about all of the elements to your tire. I'm going to break it down for you so you kind of understand all the different elements. Then I'm going to talk about weight and noise and sidewall thickness and rotating them. We're going to continue on with that element list. Once we're done with that element list, then 
how do we read the sidewalls of a tire? <laughs> what are those numbers? What are all of those things? So we have some diagrams and some graphs that I'll show. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of math and a little bit of physics, and you're going to be like, really? I wasn't planning on that. So that is on our list of things to do. Um, speed reading, load range, load indexes, how to read the tire. And then the question I know you all have is airing down. So what do you air down to? But really, it's going to be more about concept. And I'm going to give you a lot of different ways to think about airing down. Who's ready? Are you ready? I like to play on live and I like to see, I can see the chat going on over here. I got it set up where I see your guys' chat too. So say you're ready, ready, ready. Tires are sexy to get into the BFG tires winning moment tonight. And I do have a gift pack. It's gonna be a BF Goodrich tires long sleeve shirt, some BF Goodrich tires socks, chapstick, and a bunch of other cool stuff that I have out in my shipping room ready to go to you. So I think it was, you need to put your I am and your name and where you're from. That's what I'm seeing is the consistency over here. So I'm just going to reiterate that for everybody that just came in. And you're ready. I can see it. So let's talk about tires. All right. This is a all-terrain tire. That's where we're going to start. So these are what we call tire blocks. Tire blocks that are running along your entire tire tread, right? Tire tread is created with a bunch of tire blocks. Inside then we see these cuts. These cuts are what we call sipes. We call them sipes. So think about it. If you just had a tire block and the tire block was going down the road, it would just go like this. But now we have sipes and that just adds like another cut and another gripping moment. On an all-terrain tire like this, what it does is it allows you the opportunity to turn that into a snow rated tire. For us off-roaders, what it also does is it gives us another biting edge, which is very exciting, right? So we have another biting edge as we're trying to climb the rocks. Now, different companies do different things with their sipes. Uh, BFG actually cuts their sipes all the way down to the bottom, all the way down to the bottom. You can see the cut in there. You can also see where it's cut in a Z pattern. So some companies, when you're looking at your um, tire choices out there, if the sipe is only cut halfway down, think about that. What happens is your tread goes down once you get to half tread. Now we don't have the same acting tire as we did before. So we want to consider that in our purchasing. Also, you notice how this has a Z cut in it. And think about this as fingernails. <laughs> I know, guys, work with me a little bit on some of our examples. But think of it as fingernails. Like when you have a short fingernail, it's less likely to break than when you have a long fingernail. So by cutting these sipes into shorter areas, shorter distances, as your tire is wearing down, it has less drama for it to open and open too far. Then as it cuts down, we have shorter distances in order for it to continue to work exactly the way you need it. So that's a site. That's what these bad boys are here on the tread blocks. All right, inside of the tread, you see the tread pattern and there's gaps in between. You also will notice that there's little triangles inside some of the gaps. These are actually what we call rock ejectors. Tires have so much technology in them. The engineers just at every single step looked at this and said, oh, we need to do this now. So they put these rock ejectors in there and said, if a rock gets into this part right here, it's going to cause damage to the inner side of the tire. So we need to get rid of that rock and pop that baby on out. All right, let's start looking at the sidewall. So these are what we call mud phobic bars. I want everybody to write that. Mud phobic bars is like the coolest word other than tires are sexy. Mud phobic bars. <laughs> so an all terrain tire, it's its life. It's probably gonna fill up with some mud, fill up with some mud, but what's gonna happen along the sidewall of your tire is these mud phobic bars are gonna allow air to get up underneath. And that's gonna pop the mud out from in between these pieces of your tread. Then notice you have an up, down, up, down, up, down along the tread pattern as well. 
So as we're popping the mud out, we still have plenty of traction that we can get through. Well, potentially, this still is kind of packed with mud where it's not cleaned out. Don't worry, we'll talk about cleaning out tires in a little bit. So that's your mud phobic bar. Also notice while we're looking at the sidewall, how pretty it is. I know, tires are pretty. So see how pretty that is and how we have this nice scallop? That scallop has a job. What the engineers noticed as they're going down the road is there's always kind of some of a, a nice twirling effect right there. So what this is, is this is a deflection device. My example is, is you're going down the trail and all of a sudden you're going through a mud puddle. Oh, this is Piston, by the way. <laughs> he always likes to come and say hi during lives. So there's Piston. Oil might come by at some point too. <laughs> um, anyways, as we're going down the trail and there's a mud puddle, we don't ever know what's at the bottom of that mud puddle, right? Rocks, sticks, stones. And um, in Florida, apparently there's alligators in those puddles. So these are actually working to deflect everything that is on the trail as you're going down the road. Our sidewalls is our most vulnerable part of that tire. And so every single thing that we can get to help our sidewalls is an awesome opportunity. So they put those in there. Even these triangles or deflections, they're pushing things away. Uh, these ribs in here are cleaning your tire. Every piece of this tire has a job. How'd we do? Are we doing good? Everybody with me? With me? With me? All right. The sidewall of a tire is very exciting as well. Uh, these KOTs have about 32 layers of stuff in them. I'm just going to kind of leave it at that because there is a ton of goodness that is hanging out in there. But just as kind of a reference, like this has about 32 layers of of uh, stuff, as we were saying. And your passenger tire, like your little car tire, has in that eight to 10 layer range of stuff. So this is much, much thinker, thicker than what you would have in a normal passenger tire. Everybody get on this? So these are the elements. These are the elements. All right, with that then, let's talk about all trains versus mud trains. Hold on, let me switch out my tires. I've got lots of tires around here. All right. All trains versus mud trains. So taking those elements that we just learned and looking at these now, you can say, oh, it's very clear, right? And when we have our tread blocks, our tread blocks on our all train is much longer and skinnier and pushed together. And our tread blocks on our mud train are bigger and fatter and we have a lot more gapping in between them. We're also looking at the sipes. So our sipes on our all train is very tight and small. And our, gap, our sipe on our mud train is very large and aggressive. If we're looking at a mud train tire, <clears throat> well, we're going to go aggressive, right? We're looking to say, yes, I want to play in the mud. So this gapping in here is going to do what we say is helping clean the tire giving it more opportunity for that to clean out. Um, what does cleaning the tire mean? Let's go ahead and de define that now. That means as we get mud packed in here, we need to clean out these gaps so we have more biting edges. A lot of times that just means rotating that tire. You know, when you're going down the trail and you hear clump, 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 that's your tire cleaning out. That's this releasing that mud so that you have continually biting edges. When we see the two side by side again, you see how much difficult it is to clean a tire that has tighter gaps than bigger gaps, which is why this is a great tire in that mud scene. You're also gonna notice our favorite word, mud phobic bars. So here is a much larger mud phobic bar. It's allowing a lot more air to come up in there and get it out. Um, this is the KM2 versus the KM3. So we have the sidewall on the KM3 where we now have the scallop effects along the edge. 
And this is something that I know probably especially in your group as well as you're looking from the KM2 to the KM3, we all kind of get stuck in our design style, right? But now you were like, oh, the KM2 had these great blocks on it and they were really awesome and it added like a whole nother opportunity for us to, to get traction on the sidewall. Yeah, well, guess what? They gave you both on the KM3. So not only did they give you great traction on the sidewall, they also gave you the deflection device in order to work for you and keep things away from your sidewall. I'll also show you the difference in thickness in the sidewall since I have the two here right now. So here is your thickness. If you can see my finger shooting through, the top one is the KM3 and the bottom one is the KM2. So again, look at the huge thickness difference in that sidewall of the KM3. And we're actually going to talk about this a little bit more when we talk about airing down in that sidewall. All right. How are we doing? All train versus mud train. So which one do you need? Now you kind of understand all terrain tires. You understand the elements and you're like, all right, Charlene, but really I need to go buy some tires. <laughs> and um, which one do I need, right? Well, it depends. <laughs> A lot of my answers tonight are going to say it depends. So let's talk about who are you and what do you like to do? Are you driving to work every single day in your JK and your JL and your TJ, whatever your vehicle is in your truck? You drive to work every day, but you still love to go wheeling. You like to go to Moab. You like to go out into the trails. You like to have a great time. You like to go into the sand. This is a great tire. This is a great tire. I use this on all of my vehicles, my truck, my Jeep, my everything. It is a great all-around tire. More aggressive. You like to go aggressive. You don't drive on the street very often. You like to really rock crawl. You like to get after it. Uh, you drive in the mud. <laughs> you like the mud. <laughs> this is a great tire for you. So, a couple elements to it. Let's talk about noise. The mud train always gets a really bad rap for having a loud tire. Yes, guess why? The noise is coming from the gaps. So the bigger the gap is in between your tread block of your tire that you choose, the more noise that you're going to get. So the bigger the gap in between the tread blocks, the more noise. So obviously our Mud train is going to be a noisier tire than our all train. It's just the way it is. I'll also say something, and I hate using these words, especially in an ultra public forum like we are right now, but I'm going to, so just take it gently, is compounds. So the compounds of both of these tires are different. And I'm going to say your all train, for a very general term, is a harder compound than your mud terrain. This is a softer compound. So I'm very generalizing them right now for us. But the, the harder compound is what you want to drive back and forth to work on, right? It's not going to wear out very fast. You're going to get great mileage out of it, and you're still going to have a great time on the trails when you're out there. Your mud train is going to be made of a little bit of a softer compound, which also means that it's going to wear much faster if you're on the street every single day. It just makes common sense, right? It's going to wear down faster. But when you're on the rocks, this baby's going to grip. This baby is going to grip and it's going to grip really, really well. So that's where, again, I come back to you. This is your more aggressive driving style. This is maybe something that you even trailer back and forth for your long trips. But both are great tires. You just have to figure out where you're at. The other element I'll throw in, because I know we have a lot of East Coast friends tonight and snow friends, is your all-terrain tire is snow rated. So snow rated is all-terrain and you're out there and you're having a good time in the snow. This softer compound of the mud train, it's made for mud and snow. It does make it in the snow, but as far as uh, as far as these tread blocks go, they really do turn into some ice cubes when you get into some serious ice and <laughs> some serious uh, snow situations. So just be aware of that as well. Um, yeah.
<laughs> you may go for a little bit of a ride with these babies, but these are made for the snow and ice as well. All right, how did we do? We just got through the difference between the all terrain and the mud terrain, uh, noise, sidewall thickness, weight. Let's talk about weight for a second. Some people are really into weight. Um, if you're considering weight as a challenge when you are purchasing your tires, <laughs> that's really for the racers, all right? I'm just gonna say it out loud. That's really for the racers. Like racers are ultra concerned about every single corner. They need to know exactly how much weight is in every corner because of the suspension and everything that they need in order to make it work. However, in our vehicles and our recreational vehicles, when you really put it down, the difference in weight between a tire is like a bag of Skittles, like a big bag of Skittles, but a bag of Skittles. Like we're just talking about some snacks here in each of your corners. So I want you to kind of think about it when you're playing with your weight, um, where yes, it can be a concern. If you are oversensitive and you're really getting those bigger tires, that also means that you're in you're increasing the the strength of your axles, you're increasing the strength of everything attached to your tire, not just the tire. So I think that there's a much bigger picture when you're considering something along those lines. Um, so that's why I kind of look at weight when people are on that task list and say, yeah, but what's your real goal here? If it's that big of a concern, then we have axles to talk about as well. Uh, otherwise, it's a recreational vehicle. You're going to add just as much into your vehicle and snacks for the weekend as you would adding the tires, the tire change. Um, my other big tip in this section that I will give you is rotate, 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 and rotate. <laughs> uh, your off-road tires, they are aggressive regardless. They're not the stock tires. They're here to be aggressive. They're here to make you be successful off-road. But what that also means is when you're on road, they're getting worn in different directions. So you need to rotate. I tell everybody, rotate on your oil schedule. So every time that you get your oil changed, go ahead and rotate those tires. That's going to keep them from cupping. That's going to keep them from wearing in one direction and not the other. Uh, we need just as much traction when we're going forward as when we're going in reverse. Right, wheelers? <laughs> so that's a, that's a big tip from me and also rotate all five. So if you have your spare back there, make sure that you're rotating in a five rotation environment. And that is going to be very important. Why? Well, because when you finally have an opportunity <laughs> to use that spare, <laughs> as we call it, great opportunity to try to change your tire on the trail or something. Um, we actually want that tire to be worn in the same way, the same pattern as all the other ones that are out there. And it's not just a tire thing. It's actually a, a geometry thing with your vehicle. I mean, think about it. If you wear two different heights of high heel shoes, I know guys, again, sorry, work with me here. <laughs> if you wear two different heights of shoes, your hips are off. Well, if you put two different types of shoes on your vehicle, even a millimeter or a quarter of an inch, your axle is going to be off. And so now we have dimensions off as well. It's a, it's a much bigger picture thing. So just get into a habit of a five tire rotation and uh, it wears your tires down equally and it keeps it, actually, it, it really helps because that also keeps you from having to change your tires out that soon. So how do we do on this section? Everybody good with the elements of the tires? I'll take a yes, 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 or no, 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 or remember that if you do have questions, Mike is uh, grabbing those questions for me so I can answer them at the end. Jonathan and I are gonna tag team them depending on what you guys have for questions. But if you guys are good with that, then we are going to move on into how to read the sidewall. And remember, this is also being recorded live, so if you guys, come back or if you've missed a section, don't worry, you can watch that first section again after. All right, I see good, good, good. All right, Al, that means we are going to roll on on how to read the sidewall of a tire. So sidewalls of a tire, the first one that we love, <laughs> I love, is 37 by 12.5 by 
17s, right? 37, 12, 5, 17. So that's two different ways. I said it two different ways. That's what I run, 37, 12, 5, 17. So, well, isn't that awesome if we could just say that all the time? So 37 is the height from the ground to the top of the tire. 37 inches, ground to the top of the tire. 12, 5 is the width of the rim, the width of your tire. And then 17 is the rim diameter, the rim diameter, all right? 37, 12, 5, 17. I'm going to jump into a BFG topic really fast. We're going to squirrel, squirrel it off for a second. So you're like, uh, Charlene, yeah, so anyways, you're saying that they're 37 inches tall, but, you know, I've gotten my measuring tape out before, and, well, they're not 37 inches tall. They're, like, 36.5. And, you know, that half inch makes a big difference. And I'm like, yeah, I know the half inch makes a big difference, but guess what? <laughs> they're 36.5. So let me tell you the why. I think that this is a really, really cool piece of information that comes out of the BFG land. And I'm excited to tell you about this so that you can take everybody and go to them as well with this information. Here's what the engineers told me because I had the same question. I said, why? 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 I want to know why. And they said, here's the deal, Charlene. We sell internationally. So BFG is an international company. They sell all around the world. Well, every single country has a different set of rules. They have a set, a different set of regulations, just like the US has a ridiculous set of regulations. Germany does, Australia does, Japan does, China does. Every country has a different set of regulations. So what they did is they took a graph and they took these regulations and they took thresholds. Mm -hmm. So the threshold of how high that tire could be versus what had to be on the sidewall of the tire. And they took all of that information and they created a circle chart, a circle chart. And so they just made this big circle chart and then all of a sudden they put all of these circles together and right there in the middle where all these circles met is how tall that tire is, okay? So yes. You are absolutely correct. It says 37 inches, but it's not quite 37 inches, and that's the why. BF Gooders Tire is an international brand, and because of that, they made that tire to where that one tire can be sold around the world. And I think we need to have a lot of respect for that, not just say, oh, well, whatever. It's not as big, and they're not, you know, they're misrepresenting what's going on. Yeah, yes, no, and not really. Okay, so there's the information, there's the facts behind it. Now you can go blow that out to your friends. All right, back to the whole program of sidewalls. 37, 12, 5, 17. Super simple to understand. But then we got this chaos on here. We got all this metric chaos that's going on on our screen, right? So let's think about that. and. We can go ahead and bring that screen up. So this is how it would look if you had a metric sizing. The first one says P, which is passenger tire for this example. But there's also an LT, which is light truck. And there's also ST, which is trailer tire. And then there is the T, which is the temporary tire. Uh, I'll go back one so we can see the P20555R16. That's the one we're on right now. So the P is the passenger tire. It will say LT for us for our Jeep tires. And then ST would be a trailer tire. Or T would be a temporary, which would be like that donut tire that is on um, in the little cars. The next, next number next to it is the 205. That's actually your tire width. So your tire width, here, let me use this all train. It's a little bit easier to see the edges of it. So that's a millimeters factor of 205 millimeters from this edge to this edge of your tire. So that's the 205, right? Pretty simple, tire width. Then they throw in aspect ratio of 55. Okay, 
55. Ratio. Yeah, ratio means we have to do math. Math is never any fun. <laughs> so basically what that's saying is this space right here, this length, it's not 55 millimeters. It's 55% of the tire width. All right? So if I took 55% of my tire width, that's the length of my sidewall. All right? So the aspect ratio, tire width, 205. 55% of that, that's the height of my sidewall. So if you think about it conceptually, if we're going to have a 75 there or 65 there, right, that's that number that you kind of work with sometimes when you're changing your tire size, is, okay, if I have a 75 there, well, that's now 75% of my tire width. And so I just ha got a much longer, much bigger sidewall. So as you're increasing that number, the 55 to like a 75 or so forth, it's getting a longer sidewall. If you're decreasing that number, you're shortening up your sidewall. And sidewalls are very important to us as off-roaders, extremely important to us as off-roaders. So we just always are paying attention to how much sidewall exposure that we have. The R after it stands for radial which means that the plies run in a perpendicular format. So you can see that. You can see I'm actually running right there. And I'll show you the KM3, because it's a little, it's a lot thicker. All right, so that's the R for radial. D means that it's bias ply, and that means that there's crisscrossing layers on the inside. And then the 16 is the rim size. So the 16 is that rim size, so that's what, happens when it comes into your zone there. All right, good. So that's how you read the tire. All right, now I will go on to our big one. And this is gonna be a little hard because I don't think either one of us have the opportunity to show you um, the screen. So we're gonna start at the upper right where it says the LT26570R, 260 and that's what we just talked about, is the tire size, that tire size. Um, then we're gonna start rolling around to the next one, which is going to say load rating. It's really hard. Maybe you wanna put that into full screen, Al, because it is a small diagram, and I can talk through it for everybody. Um, so in the very upper top, just under the G on the BFG at the top is that LT26575R17. 75 17. That's what we just learned. Then the next one right next to it in the bubble is a load rating, 121 slash 118. We're going to come back to the load rating in a second. And then next to that is the Q, which is a speed rating. All right, Q, which is a speed rating. Um, and the next bubble around the corner is M plus S. That means mud and snow. The other thing that would be there would be a snow peak. It actually looks like a peak. And that would mean severe snow that is saying, hey, this is a true snow rated tire. As we work our way around um, to the bottom of the H, there's a Baja Champions logo there. But underneath it in the round circle is the North America load pressure and markings. So you have your min maxes. The max is uh, the max is very important. So every tire has a maximum pressure that you should should not go over. I will also note that the load ratings and the speed ratings are also built around that particular number along that particular pressure, that min max. Uh, the next bar is like a, um, a scan bar that goes through the factory. The one that's upside down right above the mud, that is the US DOT compliance and the tire ID. Part of that tire ID is a date code, all right? The date code is the first two numbers are the weeks, of the year that it was built. So it's the week or the first two numbers, and then the second two numbers is the year. So let's just use 3020 as an example. That would be the 30th week 
of 2020 is what that is standing for. That's the date code. Um, we'll talk about tires and length of tires that you should have in a minute. As we roll around, there is some more writing across the top. There's a warning sign, and then there's tire constructions materials next to it. And then we continue to roll around just past the KM3. There's some more bubbles up there. That's the international compliance codes and everything that they need to be successful to selling in the international line. Uh, and then our last one that we'll point out before we go on to the next screen is the load range. So we have load range E on this one, and I will explain what that means as well. So now we're going to dive in and we're going to talk about load range, uh, load rating, and speed rating. So Al, show me. Oh, load index. Okay. So this is our load index. This is your load range. And this is always a huge question for people. Uh, this is. Hey, do I have 10 ply, 8 ply, 6 ply? Do I need E rated, D rated, C rated? What do I got going on here? I also want to mention my source on these is Discount Tire. If you guys have any questions about tires, their blog is amazing. You can really dig in and you can really find some great information just like this on their website. So the load index for this particular one, as I said, was an E-rated tire, which means it's a 10-ply tire. Our D-rated are eight-ply, C-rated is six-ply. You don't really hear anybody talking about plies anymore. Plies is kind of an old, um, an old wording. Now we're talking more about just the ratings. There's been a lot of change in the, in the uh, talk and in the, um, how do I want to say it? The U.S. Uh, what is it? Compliance, I guess, is how it's said. As far as what you can have as an E-rated tire, what you can have as a D-rated tire, uh, and the weights and so forth. So there's been quite a bit of change in that. So if you're used to getting just like E-rated tires, like for my F350 truck, I want E-rated tires because I tow a heavy trailer. Well, guess what? I also want 37 inch KO2s on my big diesel truck out there. So that tire can only have a D rating on it. But when I get the data from the engineers after we had this major conversation, it has just as much capacity and weight capacity on it as the E rated does, which we're going to talk about, I think, on the very next slide. So let's go ahead and go to the next one which I believe is going to be our load rating. So our load rating that we had before was a 121 and 118. We have just a little bit of a delay, so I'm just trying to figure out what we have going on. Everybody sticking with me though? We're good? All right. Or it's a speed rating. Which one? We should just go ahead and throw some drum rolls right now. Which one's gonna come next? Oh, speed rating. All right. So the speed rating is the Q. So I said we had a 121 slash 118, which is the load rating, and then there's a Q right after it, which was our speed rating. So on the graph here, you can see where the speed rating Q is up to 100 miles per hour. So that means that at the maximum pressure, maximum pressure, that your tire can go up to 100 miles per hour. Heck yeah, we like that plan, right? <laughs> Who has, uh, on my Mustang, I had Z-rated tires, which is super exciting, because you're like, yeah, Z-rated tires is 149 miles per hour and over. And as a complete fact that you don't need to know yet, here's another one, is because of all these really fast cars that started coming out, they also now had to start W and Y rated tires. So the W rated tires is up to 168 and the Y rated is up to 186 miles per hour. Just in case you ever wanted to go that fast, I'm just saying, there's your plan. Um, yeah, so the Q rated tires, this is a BFG KM3 is still rated up to 100 miles per hour at a load range E. So we're doing great. All right. And then the last one is going to be the load rating. So this is where we have the 121 slash 118. Now, a load rating is telling you that 
when you have the tire at that maximum pressure, you can put X number of pounds on that tire. It will hold X number of pounds. So this load rating chart, what I couldn't get you was the very top of the chart, but the top of the chart is the index is on the left column, and then the carrying capacity is on the right column. So you can see where I highlighted the carrying capacity of the 118 that was on the side of the tire. And that's a 2910, 2910. And then the other number is 121. So that's 3,197 pounds. So for simple math moments, for all of us in simple math moments, let's just say 3,000 pounds. So that's what this tire can hold. Well, you're thinking to yourself, wait a second, Charlene, my, my JK with everything that I have on it is 6,000 pounds. And it's like, yeah, it's 6,000 pounds, all right. But guess what? Good for you. You got four tires under there, not just one. So we're still doing okay. Now, there's some physics involved. There's some math involved. There's a lot of crazy involved. And we're not going to get there. And we're not going to do that right now. But the whole concept is, is this one tire can hold 3,000 pounds. So when you put four tires underneath the vehicle and you distribute that weight of that 6,000 pounds, 6, pound vehicle with all your snacks in it, now you're doing pretty good, right? <laughs> so I hope that that makes a lot of sense on how to read that entire tire. You can go out and read it. I do encourage you to go out and read the date code for sure. Go out, find your date code on each one of your tires and see what they are. And when you're going to purchase tires, also really look at those as well. Because a lot of times, maybe you went to a tire shop and the turn on that particular tire hasn't been there for a long time. And so, ah, all of a sudden, what do we have? We have a tire that's three years old, four years old. And really, we're talking like five years is kind of the max on a tire. You need to be thinking about getting getting it gone. You need to be thinking about getting a new tire to where you have nice new fresh rubber and fresh compound that's ready to do the work for you. If you have older tires and you're out wheeling and it's not gripping on the rocks like you want it to, it's an old tire. It's tired. <laughs> it needs some love. It needs some juice back in it. So uh, go look at your tire kids. Just because they're not breaking, just because it doesn't have tire tread that's gone doesn't mean anything. And this is for your trailer tires too. Those babies are only two years old. So make sure you watch out for those as well. That's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. But are we doing good? So tonight we have already talked about all of the elements of the tire. We've talked about all trains versus mud trains. We've talked about weight, noise, actual height, sidewall thickness, rotate, 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 how to read the sidewall of the tire, snow rated, load range, speed range, indexes, math, math, math. Everybody's good. I don't see a lot of questions, so we must be hitting them so far, or you guys are just like out of control already. And remembering, we have tires are sexy for the drawing. And if you put I am and your name and where you're from, I have a BFG long sleeve shirt, some BFG socks, chapsticks, and uh, some other cool stuff that I'm going to be shipping out to you as well. All right. So that is that part. Now, on to what you really care about and what you really came here for. <laughs> I know how this all works out. Of course, tires are sexy, right? Tires are sexy. Um, are they sexy? Are you with me yet? Are you like seeing what I'm seeing? Because come on, look at these things. They're way more than black tires. Black things that go round and round on the ground. Like they got they got some serious technology in there. Okay. On to the topic of airing down. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready for this? <sighs> I'm sorry, but I cannot tell you what's air down to. I know, I just broke your heart. You were on the edge of your seat saying she's finally going to tell me what I need to air down to. Sorry. Not going to do it. Can't do it. I know, don't get angry at me, but I'm going to tell you how to get to what you need to do. All right? There's a big concept here as far as airing down goes, but let's start at the very beginning. 
Let's start at the very beginning. Let's see, I need this tire. When you air down, when you air down, what happens to the tire? Does the tire get longer? Does the tire get longer? Or does the tire get wider? I want to see it in the notes. I want to see it in the chat. Longer or wider? Which one? When you air down, is your tire getting longer? Or is your tire getting wider? Red or black? Red or black? Which one are we putting it on? Or do you think there's a gray in there? <laughs> Everybody's like, Charlene, there's always a gray. There's always some gray in there. All right, well, here's your kaboom moment. Your tire is going to get longer. Okay, your tire is going to get longer. So as you air down, as you air down, we're adding traction. We're gaining traction. So it's going to get longer. Does it get wider? Sure, it gets wider. We get a little bit of the bulge. You guys are seeing the bulge happen. But guess what? Even with these thick, thick sidewalls now, you don't even hardly see the bulge. So when I'm doing this in person, I generally have the Jeep right there. And I have um, the front one set at a street pressure and the rear one set at my low pressure for my rock crawling moments. You can't even tell the difference. The bulge with these thick sidewalls isn't what it used to be. Remember how you used to like walk out to your Jeep or your truck and kick the sidewall and say, yep, it's ready to go. I mean, you might still do that to trailer tires every once in a while, but you can't do that anymore. You can't do that to these big, thick sidewalls and expect that you're even close on where you need to be as far as pressure is concerned, especially if you're going off-roading. So, Al, let's show them what it looks like when we go ahead and air down. So the very first one that graph that you're gonna see is when it's at street pressure. So our our um the set amount of tread that is on the ground is only so big. Then we're going to start airing down. And as we start airing down, it gets just a little bit bigger. And then we take out a little bit more and it gets a little bit bigger. And then we take out a little bit more and it gets even bigger. All right. And now we got this really great pattern on the ground. And that's what's happening when we're airing down. That's what we want, right? For us as off-roaders, what do we want? We want the maximum amount of traction on the ground that we can possibly get. We want the maximum amount of this awesome on that rock to where we can use it as we need to. So again, it goes small, bigger, bigger, and then kaboom, there we are all the way aired down. All right, that's what it looks like. That's the why. That's how it is. And there's that big, nice graphic with all four of them in the in the pattern. So I love it. Hopefully that really helps kind of put that together. Again, are we getting wider? Sure, we're getting a little bit of that bulge. Yes, absolutely, no doubt about it. We're still going to be using our sidewalls. And then back to our fancy sidewalls and how we have the scallops there. We're also able to use these sidewalls as knobs as well, but that's not the main purpose. That's not the main thing. All right. Now you're like, Charlene, I want pressure numbers. <laughs> Tell me what to put out there. Oh, please do me a favor. Don't ever ask people what to put in your, in your ear, in your tires online. Oh my goodness. Who's been a part of one of those threads before? Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> okay. Um, let's think about the concepts. When you're airing down, the whole reason to air down is to have bigger tread pattern on the ground, more traction on the ground. We can't tell you what that number needs to be because every single vehicle is different. Four doors, if you have a four door out there, Man, you got a big old booty going out in the back. That thing is heavy. You got all your camping equipment. You got your refrigerator going on. Maybe you have five kids. 
right? Maybe you have a roof rack, maybe you have a tent, maybe you're hauling a trailer, maybe you have all of these things. I can't tell you what kind of weight you have in your vehicle. And that is a key component to what your tires need to be set at. Or maybe you just have a two door and you don't have a whole bunch of stuff. Or maybe you have a truck. And so let's think about a truck. All of your truck, all of your weight is in the front. And then you have very little weight in the back if it's just a truck bed, unless all of a sudden you got all kinds of cool stuff back there, right? <laughs> then, then you don't. So again, you know, somebody says, oh, well, I have a Nissan truck. And it's like, oh, okay, well, they got weight in the front, no weight in the back. But they forget to tell you that they have a rooftop tent and 18 um, pieces of recovery equipment that are all over 100 pounds that they have stacked on the rear gate. So here's what I want you to do. I really want you to think about weight and what you have and how much that weighs. And let's talk about those kids again. Maybe you take the kids this weekend, but then next weekend you decide not to take the kids. That's a 500 pound difference-ish <laughs> in what you have in your vehicle. Let's talk about going for a big weekend versus a day trip. A day trip, maybe you're like a super simplest and you just have a backpack and a couple things that you take with you. Not me, but maybe that's you. So off you go on your day trip. Well, you're super light. And then you go on a camping trip. Well, now the camping trip, we need our tents and we need our cooler and we need our snacks and we need this and we need that and we need this and we need that. We need all kinds of stuff. And so all of a sudden, the weight difference in your same exact vehicle is different. Maybe you're going on a simple trip and you know you decide just to take your simple recovery kit. You're gonna go on your weekend trip and you're going in for two days. Well, guess what? We're taking our high lift and we're taking this and we're taking that and we're taking this and we're taking that and we're gonna take our big kit and we're gonna take our welder and we're gonna take this and we're gonna take that, right? Because things happen. Yeah, lots of weight. So there's a big, big difference there. And I really want you to think about that. Okay, so now I've had you think about that plenty of times, but the examples to it. Now you have to figure out your own pressures. I'm gonna tell you mine. I'm gonna tell you what my pressures are, but you then get to think about how you wanna set up yours. Um, you know your street pressure. You know your street pressure for the most part, maybe, hopefully, if you have a good one that you're working with. The, the most important part about your street pressure is that you can fill your steering wheel. You can feel it and it's not wandering. If you're wondering, and it's a tire issue, it's not a suspension <laughs> issue or a lot of other issues, if it's truly a tire issue, start playing with your pressures. Or maybe you're wondering and you never thought about it being a tire issue. Start playing with your pressures. Add a little bit or take a little bit. Either one can cause you to wander. Uh, look at how your tire is wearing. Is it wearing well directly across the tread? Or is it wearing in a position to where you have you know, too much wear in the center or it's starting to cup on the edges. Think about that. So now you have your set uh, pressure. Uh, again, I'm going to tell you mine. So I have a four-door JK, 37-inch, 12.5-17s, as we know, uh, KO2s, all right? And I pack a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm totally a girl. I always have a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay, so my street pressure, I run it right around 32 to 33 pounds. <clears throat> um, I like them, I like it pressure is high because I want my tires very responsive. I might be slightly aggressive of a driver. And so I want my tires to be right there for me as I go and do what I want to do. So that's where my street pressure is. Um, when I just go down a simple dirt road, just going to go down a simple dirt road, I'm going to go have a good day. We're just going to go sightseeing and see some stuff. Might be slightly lazy on the whole plan of airing down and airing back up just because it takes time, right? Who doesn't agree with me? Some of you guys agree with me. You're like, ah, I don't need to air down. It'll be fine. But I do. I take about five pounds out. And it's really a comfortability. Think about that. Like you have this hard balloon. You have a lot of air in this tire. If I take just a little bit of air out, that comfort is going to be so much nicer. I say 
I only have to wear one sports bra, not two sports bra, if I just let a little bit of air out, <laughs> right? So, girls, you know what I'm saying, and guys, if you don't know what I'm saying, your wife is going to appreciate you if you just take a few pounds of air out, <laughs> all right? So, that's the that's the first step, is like take that five pounds out and start understanding what did that do? All right, then I'm going to go on a day trip, and I have somebody with me, my Fridge is full of food and snacks and drinks. Uh, I have some, my recovery equipment with me. You know, we're going to go have a great time. I'm going to air down. My number there is 23 pounds. And you're like, whoa, Charlene, that's high. I'm like, yeah, because I like to drive. I love to drive. And I don't need my tires doing all the work for me. Because guess what? They absolutely can. They absolutely can. So if I'm going to go out on just a day trip, I'm not going to air down to my ultimate max because I want to go have a little bit of fun. I want it to be a challenge. That challenge. Everybody has their own way of dealing with air pressures. So I only air down to about 23 pounds. I go out. I have a great time. If I have a little bit of a challenge on a rock section, I'm like, heck yeah, made it, did a good thing. It all worked out great. If you're just going on your day trip, air down more. It's okay. It's okay. You let your tires do the work for you. And you saw on that graph how much more traction you have on the ground as you air down. So it's okay. All right, my low, my low low is 18 pounds. That's me going on the Rubicon. That's me at Easter Jeep Safari. That's me in Moab. That's me in all these places. And the reason why it's 18 pounds is because I have stuff. <laughs> Let me tell you, I almost do bring the kitchen sink every single time. So I have stuff. And I have more stuff and I got people with me and I'm hosting events and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And so I have a lot of weight in that vehicle. So 18 pounds is really kind of my base number at that point. Let me use this as an example. I'm going to tell you a story about, well, hold please. I'm going to tell you my next one. 18 pounds. Rubicon. But is that my absolute low? No, it's actually not. Now, I forgot to tell you, I have regular wheels. They're fake beadlocks. <laughs> they look like beadlocks, but they're not. So I have regular wheels. If you have beadlock wheels, you can go down as slow as you want to go, right? But if you have regular wheels, you're really paying attention to that because we need to make sure that we have enough pressure that's pushing out from the inside of the tire to the outside of the tire. I also always have a way out. I'm always thinking, okay, if I get stuck, how do I get out of this stuck situation? If I get myself into something, what are my outs? Well, I can pull a winch line. I can pull out my recovery gear. I can pull out a strap potentially. But guess what else I can do? I can air my tires down and I can get myself some more traction. So my actual low low on my tires is 14 pounds. That is one where I get to a rock obstacle and I can't make it, but I can jump out. I can make a decision. Okay, I just want to pull the winch really fast. Sure, I can pull the winch really fast. Or am I really stuck and I'm pulling the winch and I'm still stuck? Well, guess what? I feel I know my low low is 14 pounds. I feel comfortable there with having a set of tires on and wheels on that it's not going to strip off the wheel. Um, and so I air down to that. I get through that one obstacle, I get up to the top, and I air back up to 18 pounds. And then I continue down the trail. Because 14 pounds, I don't feel comfortable at. That's not a pound that I want to go going down the trail and potentially getting myself into damage. Because I will tell you, sidewall damages, sorry, nobody's going to like to hear this, most all of them are driver air. Sidewall damage, most all of it is driver air. It's a stick coming out. It's a sharp rock coming out. It's us being up on top of a rock obstacle and sliding off and cutting that sidewall. 
So we just are always paying attention to our sidewalls. And at 14 pounds, that's just too much exposure for me to be like safely going down the trail from what I feel. Again, these are my numbers. They're not your numbers. Your numbers can be very different. <clears throat> Let me ta now tell a story about um, one Jeep on the Rubicon Trail. They were there, they came in, and they were angry. This couple was angry. They had just cut two tires on the way in, two KO2s. Uh, okay, I would have been angry too, like super angry, right? I'm like, yeah, that's not a good plan. So it was a very expensive day for them, and they were very angry. And so they came up, and they're like, we just cut these tires. And rah, 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 rah. Okay, they cut sidewalls. So what's our first thing? Ah, okay. But the first question is, we're going to be kind. So what air pressure are you at? And they're like, well, we're 18 pounds. And so, again, I just told you mine. I'm like, oh, well, okay, that makes common sense. That works. Hmm, that's interesting. So then uh, continue the conversation, whatever, whatever. And finally, we uh, understood that they were from Canada. And they were from Canada, and they had all of their worldly possessions and their four-door JK. They were down visiting for three months. That thing was packed to the gilt with, with weight, like tons of weight in there. And we're like, uh, okay, can we see you drive this down the trail really fast? And sure enough, what was happening is there was so much weight in that vehicle that when that 18 pounds of pressure went over one of those Rubicon rocks, right? If you guys have been on it, you know what I'm talking about. Any kind of a Rubicon rock. It was pushing the wheel directly into the sidewall, and it was the wheel that was cutting the sidewall of their tire because of the weight that had been pushing down on it. We had them air up four more pounds, and they had a great rest of their trip. It's the weight. And I guarantee you what happened is they went online and said, hey, what should I run for tire pressure? If I was to go on the Rubicon Trail and I have a JK and this is what I'm doing, they forgot to mention that they have all their worldly possessions for three months in their vehicle with a thousand pounds of weight because 18 pounds is a good number, but it wasn't for them. So I want you guys to go out and start playing around with your air pressures. A couple pounds here, a couple pounds there is always going to make a difference, especially when you start getting lower and lower and lower. And so you know your start spot. Go and do that dirt trail and start finding out, okay, this is what feels more comfortable to me. <laughs> Find that comfort level. And then the next one is now start going on those, those rocks and start playing with them. I do encourage you to find one rock obstacle. Find a good one and find that rock obstacle and start at some kind of a mid pressure, whatever that mid pressure is to you, and try and climb that obstacle. How did that tire do for you? What was the challenges? Then come back down, take out some air and do it again. You're going to see that tire start working for you because, of course, we have more traction. And continue to kind of do that process as you start going down and down and down. Now, you're going to get better at that rock obstacle because you're now doing it multiple times. So I really want you to focus and concentrate on the tire and what the tire is doing as you're letting that air pressure down. Don't give it more gas. Don't say, oh, yeah, I need to bump it now. <laughs> no cheating. Focus on the tire. All right, that's our job for <laughs> this program. And let that tire decide what it's going to do. And, um, and then you'll end up starting to see your low. You'll end up starting to see that low because uh, that, that sidewall is going to start scrunching. And you can have somebody on the outside taking pictures for you as well. That's a great opportunity and a great way to do it. Or have somebody else do the driving and then you are able to see the tire do the work, whichever one you feel most comfortable with. But that's the way you should look into your air pressures. All right. The very last thing before we go to if there's any Q&A left. Um, this is just a pro tip. Uh, these are coyote deflators. We give them away every month at Ladies Offer Network. We do a lot of giveaways. Uh, and what these guys are is these are actually tools that you can find 
uh, there's multiple different brands. These are the Coyote ones. You set them up in your driveway to where you get it to where, let's just say 23 pounds, you adjust it and you get it to where when you put this on 23 pounds, uh, your whatever comes out to where you get it down to 23 pounds. I'm not going to go into how you set these, but that's what these tools are. So essentially, you do the work in your driveway once. And then when you get to the trailhead, you put these on your tires, <laughs> on the tire, and you sip your coffee while all your friends are uh, over there with their stick, with their head down and their ass up, right? <laughs> We've all seen it happen. So, so this is a tricky tool. This is a really cool tool. Now, there's four that come in your kit. You could set all four of these to 23 pounds if that's what you want. Makes sense. You put them on all four tires and shabam, you're aired down in a matter of seconds. Or if you're like me and you get a, want to get a little crazy crazy and you want different tire pressures for your different things that you like to do, then you can set one. I have one set to 27 pounds, one set to 23 pounds, one set to 18 pounds. So which one is this one set to? You got it, 14 pounds. Right. So when Charlene's super frustrated and she can't get up that rock obstacle and she wants to air down instead of me going out with a stick or something and figuring out how many times you have to check the pressure in order to get it down to 14 pounds. I just go shabam, get my 14 pound one out. Boop, boop, boop. Half the time, nobody even knows I'm doing it. Take my air down to 14 pounds, crawl that rock obstacle, get up to the top, air it back up to 18. And off we go back down the trip. There's your pro tip. Now, Mike, what do you think? That's what I got. <laughs> Unless you guys want more. That's tires, baby. They are so sexy. <laughs> awesome. That was that was great. Um, tons of good information there, Charlene. Thanks a ton. Yeah. So, Mike, you want to go with the questions? Yeah, actually, I think the first one would be a good one for um, for Charlene. She has a lot of experience um, here. Uh, this one's from Carson. He said, um, KO2s for diesel, how do they hold up and can I get 50000 out of them? Oh, good, for diesel trucks. Okay, so I have an F350 um, diesel truck with 37 KO2s on it, and I love them. Um I am definitely an all-terrain person on my trucks, not a mud train because they do wear out so fast. Um, as far as the, you know, how I was saying the softer versus harder compounds. And I tow. Anytime I'm taking my truck out, I'm towing, right? So there's that. Um, BFG actually just came out with a brand new segment of their KO2 line, specifically built for diesel trucks, specifically built for trucks. And why? Why? Because a diesel truck has a ton of torque in it. And I know you, I know all of you guys, you like to put your foot on the pedal. So when you're putting that torque in, think about a truck. We have a ton of weight in the front and not a lot of weight in the back, but that torque is putting all of that power into the back. And all of that goes into, a lot of times, wheel spin and bad wheel spin at that. And that's when whew, we can either smoke the tires, which is cool, or we don't smoke the tires, but we're actually mm -hmm. killing the tread. Um, so yes, you do want to get the ultrains. I cannot tell you how long they're going to last because I don't know your drive style. And that's a legitimate comment. If you come up to stop signs all the time, super fast, and then you throw on your brakes, you're wearing your tires down way faster. If you come up to that stop sign and then you're like, brah, and, well, that's a dirt bike. Anyways, you go off after <laughs> it, then, yeah, then you're also burning off those tires. So if you are a nice driver and you kind of come up to the stop sign and then you leave the stop sign, you're going to get a lot more mileage out of those tires. But I would look into the um, the DT rated, the KO2s. It's really exciting. You're going to see me putting them on my truck uh, so that you can also see how they work out as well. But it's a brand new tire that's just coming out. Uh, BFG said, we see the challenge and we are addressing it and we're taking it head on. So that's really exciting. 
Did that Very help? cool. I see Carson, you said 10-4. Cool. All right. Yeah. Awesome Which also answer. must be the one that peels out from the south side. <laughs> <laughs> All you right. Know, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jonathan, you don't drive that way, do you? Absolutely not. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Mike. Who's None that beside you, Mike? Wait, wait. Who's that beside you? Ah, this is my wife, Sarah. Yay, Sarah's here. <laughs> All right. So, um, Charlene, you touched on this one a little bit already with the date code and stuff, but maybe expand a little bit more on what happens to tires as they age and why it's so important, um, Jonathan or Charlene, why it's so important once they hit that five-year mark to get them out of the way. What yeah, so, exactly kind of starts to happen to them? Yeah, so I'll take that one. And, Charlene, if you have any other uh, thing you want to add to it, feel free to comment in. Um, so basically whenever you, uh, you get to that five, six-year range is what we normally tell our customers. Um, you've got oils in, t in the tire. And as time goes on, those oils eventually seep out of the tire. Um, so in a highway situation, um, as the oil is leaving the tire as it ages, um, you get what, what is probably the biggest enemy in a tire, uh, it would be friction. Um, so as the oil is leaving, everything in that tire is not lubricated well. It's starting to get friction on the inside and eventually come apart. Awesome. And I'm going to add, I'm going to add into that. So that's on the road. And then we have a bunch of people that don't drive their off-road vehicles. And so they're sitting in the garages or our trailer tires that are sitting in the backyard. So if your tire is sitting on the ground uh, in the garage, that concrete is pulling that that uh, those oils out as well. So if you can get your tires up off the ground, it's not just to keep them from not being around. It's also from having that material seeping out. Our trailer tires are even worse because the dirt in your backyard is even more demanding of everything that's in that tire. So that dirt in the backyard, every time it gets wet, dries, wet, dries, it's also pulling and seeping that stuff out of that tire. So if you have trailer tire issues continuously or if you're parking your trailer for, mul for multiple times or months at a time, get those tires up off the ground and that's going to uh, give you a longevity of life as well. Awesome. Um, this next one I've got right here, Dan Allison. He said, is the chalk test still valid finding appropriate pressures on highway with custom tires? Uh, so, yeah, the, the chalk test is very effective um, if you're trying to figure out your air pressures yourself. Um, I would always recommend taking it to your local dealer. Um, I'll, allow them to assess the vehicle. Um, they can figure out. Um, if you've upsized, um, they can figure out, you know, what exactly that tire needs as far as air pressure to carry the, the weight of the vehicle. Awesome. Um, for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with the chalk test, you guys explain it to us just briefly, kind of what that is. Yeah, so the, the chalk test, um, uh, and I haven't heard many, many people use it in, in today's uh, – today's world, but, um, it, it is a, a, a tool you could, you couldn't use. So essentially you would take a, a piece of chalk and, and go over the, the section width of the tire, which is the, the face of the tire, you know, as, as Charlene was showing us those cutouts. Um, and, and as you increase or decrease air, um, the, the chalk line will, will, um, erode away pretty much. Um, so if you don't have enough air in it, um, you're going to see the uh, the outsides of the tire kind of eroding away at, on the chalk um, and vice versa for too much air. Awesome. All right. Next one comes from uh, Dwayne. Is there an optimum sidewall ratio for off-road use? I'm let I'm Charlene. Guessing. I'm let Charlene take that one. <laughs> with her off-road experience. <laughs> okay. Um, well, let's talk about reds for a minute. Who loves some red crawler tires? 
And I'll use this as our example to talk about sidewalls. So if you love reds, throw a heart, because I do. I love looking at them and touching them and taking them on the trail. But here's the deal. So the reds went from 39-inch tires to now 42-inch tires. And there is a big, easy conversation about what size wheel to put the 42-inch tires on. So the 39s have a 17-inch wheel. Therefore, you only have so much sidewall. If you have a 42-inch tire and you put it on a 17-inch wheel, think about how much longer that sidewall is going to be. It's going to be so much more exposed. If you have a um, but then they decided, well, let's put it on a 20-inch wheel. By putting it on a 20-inch wheel and expanding that wheel up, we just recreated that same ratio of sidewall exposure. So what I'm trying to get at is even what the, the technical gurus are doing in, in the land of building the tire is they are creating it to where you don't have so, so much sidewall exposure. We don't want that to, sidewall to have ultra flex. We don't want it to be really big. Um, but you also don't want to run your 20 inch dubs when you're out wheeling because then we'd only have a little bit of sidewall there in order for us when we do air down to be able to grip that rock on the side. Um, if you watch some of my rock crawling videos with the buggy with the 39 reds, you're going to notice, and you guys notice this too when you're really out there wheeling, that that sidewall is doing a lot of work for you. It's doing just as much work sometimes as what the actual tread is if you're getting into the big rock crawling zone. So um, I'm not sure if that – there's not an actual number. Like I don't want to say, well – you should only have 12.5 because that's not reality. But I need you to really think about the concept of it. So, you know, longer sidewalls, much more exposure, a lot more roll. Shorter sidewalls, if we're going to do the 20-inch dubs, then we don't have enough exposure on our sidewalls. So that's why you're seeing a lot of times um, in our, our world, those 37, 12, 5, 17s is the commonality. The 30, um, 37, 12, 5, 17 as well. Like those are the common numbers that you're seeing. Excellent. Thank <laughs> Tim's you. like, Thank oh, you no, <laughs> all right, well, I want to see y'all wheeling them. <laughs> hey, I got, I got dubs on the ram. They came on right. it. <laughs> all right. Um, this one, I think uh, probably be a good one for, Jonathan, maybe Charlene, but best material to park your trailer tires on uh, if you're going to be letting it sit for a while. Yeah, so, so as, as Charlene mentioned, you know, get them up off the ground. Um, if, if you've noticed, uh, if you've parked your trailer on concrete for any period of time and you've rolled it away, you, you notice there's what looks to be a, a tire tread there in your concrete. That's not tire rubber. That's actually the oils from your tire seeping out. So get them up off the ground. Um, that takes the stress off of them, the weight of the actual trailer, too. So, Yeah, excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Well, um, that is all the questions that uh, I have seen come up. Um, but uh, I'm going to pass it over to Al here in just a second. But thank you guys so much for coming out and helping us with the TechNet series. Thank you so much for sponsoring it. Um, and uh, for Charlene's sake here, um, Big booty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get to get Mike saying all kinds of things. Yeah. So we got him to say big booty when talking about four doors. Now you got everybody saying tires are sexy. Like the world is great. Jay, he wants to trade ice cream for tires. Like, I like that guy. <laughs> 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 we have all kinds of fun when we're teaching so yeah i really appreciate the opportunity to come out and add some entertainment value to your off-roading experience because that's what we do we definitely laugh the whole time we're learning right mike isn't that it <laughs> that's right and before we throw it over to al i want to give uh Charlene a big thanks i uh, appreciate you getting on here today and and telling the world why tires are sexy <laughs> Everybody to be using that hashtag too. Let's throw it down. <laughs> Let's do that. 
Okay, so let's let's not let's not forget comment tires are BFG tires are sexy, and you'll be entered uh, in a drawing for a set of five BFG tires. We'll hold that drawing at Dixie Run, which is the first weekend of October. Uh, you do not have to be present to win, so get over there and, uh, and comment, guys. Uh, it's a great opportunity, Jonathan. Thank you for for helping us out with the, with those tires. Okay, absolutely, um, Charlene. Awesome. Thank you a lot. Okay. I love it. I love and appreciate the opportunity. As, as you know, we're opening up Bauer Academy, which is all industry standard of learning for education. And Mike's part of it. He's been a guest on a lot of stuff I do too. So I really appreciate it. Really appreciate the opportunity to meet everybody here at Southern Four Wheel Drive Association. Thank you. Take, take a minute and tell us a little bit more about your academy. Oh, thank you. Um, so Bauer Academy. Well, Ladies Off Road Network and everything I've done through Bauer Media has been all about education and working with racers and working with events and companies. And so um, Bauer Media or Ladies Off Road Network just got more and more aggressive into it. I went around the country last year. I went to 75 four-wheel parts mm -hmm. and taught ladies around the country hands-on a five-hour class. And it was amazing and it was aggressive and it was not something I really want to do again <laughs> to that degree. Um, and, but what I also learned while I was doing it is ladies and guys want to learn just as much as the ladies do. And the, the smart guys came to the class and hung out with all of us cool chicks. Um, but I saw where we really needed to start at Bauer Academy. And that is an online education center where it's – legitimately an industry standard of learning. So I'm teaching it, uh, Mike's teaching it, people are teaching it that are in that higher level or, you know, somebody that's a part of a company that that is their specialty is teaching in there. And that's what's important. So yes, you can go to YouTube and you can surf YouTube and you can find information. But when you come in here, it's no question, like you're getting the best of the best. And we have it set up in that manner. So we, the very first program that I have out, it's uh, 25 how to's, how to work on your vehicle, it's maintenance, all the maintenance items, how to change your oil, diff fluid, transmission fluid, windshield wipers, because don't they kick everybody's rear anyways? Um, all these types of things. And we have uh, 250 girls taking the class right now. And as soon as we get through a little bit more, I'm going to let everybody in. So that's the first one to be available. Uh, my racer marketing school will be in there. We're going to have a lot of other classes in there as well. So watch for that at BauerAcademy.com if you want to get on the email list to know when we start it up. Great. And Mike, what are you doing down there on the coast? You're about to start a something called Marson Outdoor Adventures. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, as kind of everything starts to, to starts to lift, and we can start getting out on the trails a little bit more, um, we will be starting to do uh, classes here on the East Coast, um, working not only. Um, with just schedule classes throughout the uh, throughout the year, but also we'll be working with shops and providing classes kind of at their locations um, so that people can actually see some of the most common products on the market being used um, and demonstrated before they purchase them. Um, but we're also looking at um, getting a little bit outside of the four wheel drive industry and doing some of uh, just some of kind of the outdoor skills and things like that. Our ultimate goal um, with Morrison's Outdoor Adventures, kind of our mission statement is to reconnect families and individuals through the outdoors. Um, so disconnect from electronics uh, and get outside. Great, great. And I need to thank Mike, too. He, he's been the number one presenter in our TechNet series. Last week, Mike and I were at Clemson Four Wheel Drive Center. We did a, we did a session on, uh, on suspensions. We got lots of good feedback. We had like 79 people on the live stream. And then within a, within a couple of days, we had nearly 2,000 people view it. So thanks, Mike, for helping with that. Uh, yeah, glad and, to do it. And each week, we always have a drawing. Last week, we, uh, we, we had a drawing for a Jayco uh, Elite Tire Pressure Gauge. And uh, Cody Boone was the winner. 
Uh, that's Cody Boone was the lucky winner. I'll reach out to Cody with a message and try to get his address so I can uh, so I can fire off uh, his great tire pressure gauge. Um, also, don't forget, guys, we're going to be giving away that set of tires. Please comment over there. And and what what do we need? What do we need to say in the comment? BFG tires are sexy. Oh, right. Yeah. So, so you got another minute or two to comment. BFG tires are sexy to be eligible to win. We're yes. we're giving every every week. Every time you put the secret comment in, you are uh, you're eligible to win. So I, I hope you guys are still with me. Um, yeah. Let's see. Thanks to hear you I, I, I think that's it. So thanks everybody. Thanks to our guest speakers. Uh, we will publish this on YouTube probably on Sunday uh, if you want to rewatch it over there. And you can always watch it on Facebook if you want to watch it again. Uh, Charlene, Jonathan, Mike, thank you all. And good night, everybody. Absolutely. Good night. Good night. Thank you. See you guys. Everybody yearns for something. Few have the drive to reach out and take it. We build for those with the conviction to stand up straight and demand what they want out of life. We champion those who refuse to see the world as it is, but what it could be. Sure, it'd be easier to sit on the couch, but that's just not how we're built. Easy never put a man in space. The status quo never won the Le Mans. It sure hasn't dominated the Baja 1000 for the last 50 years. No, complacency never really did much of anything. In the age of one-click purchases and two-day shipping, we take solace in the fact that calluses can't be bought. We reject apathy and instant gratification. Because lasting legacies don't come off the rack. We know what we're building for. What are you building for?